A year ago, Christian Wolff discovered the fastest growing black hole that we know of in the universe. Now he's hungry for more. Yeah, looks good. He wants to look back over 12 billion light years and find ancient supermassive black holes that appear to break the rule book. Our mission now is to find the most massive and fastest growing black holes. We want to figure out how black holes can grow and how they first formed at the beginning of the universe, in the early stages of the universe. And that means finding the fast growing ones and the really massive ones because they are the hardest ones to explain. Welcome to our telly. It's a 2.3 meter sized telescope. That means the mirror inside the telescope has over two meters of diameter. The whole structure is over 10 meters tall. But we can look for 13 billion light years with it. As gas falls towards one of these supermassive black holes, it gets super bright and we call it a quasar. A quasar is a black hole with all that heat radiating stuff around it. A, a range of storm clouds that are being swirled around. There's a lot of energy there. There's a lot of radiation coming out that we can study. It's Christian's ability to recognize potential black holes amongst the vast number of objects in space that makes him so successful. We can see all the objects that are there. We know the positions and the brightness and the colors. Then we pick out our candidates for these supermassive black holes. And then we point this telescope at them. By splitting the white light emitted from the accretion disk into different wavelengths, Christian can detect the precise mix of chemical elements in the radiation. Every chemical element, oxygen, iron, magnesium, leaves characteristic fingerprints. It absorbs the light at specific wavelengths. We'll be able to recognize these fingerprints or other features and then see, ah, now we know what we are looking at. We're looking at this type of a star or actually, wait a minute, we are looking at a fast growing black hole with its accretion disk around and with storm clouds that are glowing in all sorts of elements and so on. And to everyone's surprise, our camera's barely rolling when the very first object they look at seems to have that promising chemical fingerprint. As you see, that's basically no, no signal and that's all noise. That's the sky. Yeah, that's just the sky. Mm. However, oh, if yeah. we actually do a proper extraction, we see that. Right, was I allowed to see this? The night has just started, and they've already found their first supermassive black hole. Come on, that's a beauty. We're looking at a spectrum of a quasar, a supermassive black hole in the early universe surrounded by an accretion disk. The, the heat from the accretion disk gives us that sort of baseline light here, and that's magnesium glowing in those clouds that silicon glowing in those clouds. Here is nitrogen glowing, and that's hydrogen glowing. There's oxygen there as well. These elements all apparently form very early in the universe. The first hit. This is what we came for. Which one is that from the list? The first one that The first said. one? That you said was interesting. What? One out of one, I'm just stunned. Sorry. But Christian is doing more than just stalking the skies for a single supermassive black hole. If that was all we got, we could go home happy now. <laughs> <laughs> but of course we want to get more. Sure. His mission is to collect the data from as many as possible. We're trying to smash the records, so we don't know how many they are there. We have no expectation of how many we are likely to find, so each one counts and each one makes a difference. The reason? 
to solve the complex problem of how they got so big. I wonder how they have formed, and physics doesn't provide a way to do that within what we know. So I want to map out the demography of those black holes and their early growth, and then we can infer from that what exactly is the problem that we have to solve here. The problem is likely bigger than we have acknowledged so far. The answer lies in two possibilities that could change what we think we know of the universe forever. Either they were formed in the Big Bang, if we find that they've been growing slowly and they started out very massive, very close to the Big Bang, then we have a rather profound mystery here. If the Big Bang made black holes, Jesus, what else is possible then? Or they're growing in a much faster way than we previously expected, defying our current understanding of the laws of physics. These things are growing faster than what we think we see and also faster than what we think physics allows. And to solve that mystery, Christian and his students have to do what they do best. Definitely. Yeah, it is. Look at these bumps. What is that? Oh, They've found another supermassive black hole and it's even bigger than the first. Between 15 and 20 billion solar masses. So, you know, we're, we're really adding them at the top end. They're extreme. They're wild places, but there's only few of them and they're very hard to find. And I just, I just like the hunt. I just like to pinpoint them and say, gotcha, gotcha. It was nearly impossible, but here you are. We've got proof.